How about a warning? You're about to share with my friend Michael W. Dean, a survivor, things about humanity and his methods for dealing with it. Brace yourself for some bare naked honesty. If you're willing to hear what Michael is saying, there are times when you'll laugh and times when you want to cry in the retelling of his truths. He has to find it so you can feel it. Take his example and live. I warned you earlier because this book is written in the same way Michael speaks. He's a straight shooter, a no pretense, a no excuses kind of guy that I love like a brother. Understanding how we are to deal with negative people, Michael has answers for you. The human race has its aberrations and monsters, and unfortunately, sometimes they are close to you. Michael gives you his take on them and how he handles the noise. I can guarantee you will pick up a tool to use from a user's manual for the human experience. As Michael says, his life is a teaching hospital. A user's manual for the human experience. Kindle, paperback, and audiobook. Get it now on Amazon. And I know you guys are aware that I have gotten divorced, but I have found Ooh. somebody that I really, really like. Ooh. Lady. Oh. Her name is Chelsea. Wow. Fast She's mover, awesome. man. She's, wow. <laughs> she, uh, Chelsea, well, I mean, okay. Is now, her to, okay, to be fair, name Hillary and her dad's name. Oh, oh no, Hillary. no, oh god. Question uh, mark. Well, her 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 dad's name is William. Okay, it's not Bill. Oh, he prefers he prefers you not to use the short and shorthand version of that. Okay, oh, okay that was that bad. was a public thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 115th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCAT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCAT.org. So we are back. I am Jeremy, joined as always by Dave and Andre, who is returning again this week, finally. Hey, Andre, Dave, what's going on, guys? Hey, I'm back. I'm back. I had a great vacation. Just, I'll tell you all about it. Woohoo! Glad to hear you're back, uh, Andre. Uh, we, you I were, am, I'm you alive. Were I am, deep, in fact, alive. You were deeply missed, uh, you were, especially last week. I, I was like, well, well, last like week did was you the- forget I wasn't on the show? And I was like, what? <laughs> Last week's the only week we missed them because because we took we, we took we all took the week off to, with the week before because I was well, on vacation I still too. missed both of you guys the, well, uh, the yes. two week you know week, two well, weeks we got here, together. So, um, well, well anyway. I missed you too, Dave. Oh. I missed you too. I missed both. We of you need guys. to get a, a we need to get a a, a, a amendment to the the Bipcot no gov license. It needs to say it, this excludes all 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 self governors. <laughs> no, it's just government, dude. We're not going to go down that. We're not going to go down that semantical road right now, Dave. Anyway. <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, as as always, we uh, this week. Uh, well, this week we were brought to you again by Fiend Phone, and as always, we are brought to you for, by Room for Freedom. Still nothing there yet. Um, so anyway, as we were saying, uh, Andre uh, Andre was off last week, so he is back. And there uh, is something at solpodcast.org, though. Yes, we mentioned well, we mentioned that last week, and uh, finally, 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 we do have a website. Uh, thanks to our our good friend Paul Gordon, who yeah. I who it's like ninety percent Paul Gordon. Yes, yeah. Probably more, um, <laughs> but yes, Paul. Paul did a great job. He's got uh, he's got the SOL uh, website back up, uh, back up better than ever. And uh, oh man, and it's it, it it doesn't even violate the nap anymore. It does uh, well, it yeah. Damned. Well, Jim Jesus hasn't given us a ruling just yet, but uh, he did. He did remind us. He did remind me that he no is, matter what, no matter what, he, we, he, it can never be forgotten that we did once have a, a nap violating website. So we shall always be wearing that cone of sh- he shame. He is the self proclaimed authority on the nap and the arbiter of all nap trials. So yeah, I'm 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 oh, anxious. Oh, okay. So okay. Well, so so just so I understand it. So when we finally get rid of the state and we have a stateless society, Jim Jesus is the he one we're going to go to whenever we need to arbitrate not disputes. not our government. Yes. You perfect. get you it's you got to use the quotations with your fingers in the air too. He will be not our government. Not our government. Okay. It's worked okay. much better when we yeah. did video. Any hoodle. So as 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 we were saying before all this, Andre, you're back. What you been up to, man? Where you been? Uh well, I took a week off. 
I the the blah, 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 the week that we didn't have an episode at all. Um, I took a week off. I went down to the beach, uh, hung out with Merrick, and 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 I know you guys are aware that I have gotten divorced, but I have found Woo! somebody that I really really like. Ooh, lady. Oh, her name is Chelsea. Wow, wow. fast She's mover, awesome. man. She's, wow. <laughs> she, uh, well, I mean, okay. Is now, her to, mother's okay, to be fair. name Hillary and her dad's name? Oh, oh no, yes. no. Oh God. Question uh, mark. Well, her 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 dad's name is William. Okay, it's not Bill. Oh, he prefers oh. he prefers you not to use the short and shorthand version of that. Okay, oh, that okay, was that bad. was a public thing. <laughs> 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 no, God, no, 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 no. I I don't think I could okay. I could stand to be in the same room as, as somebody who looks like a horse. That's the same problem I have with Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> but uh no 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 um all right two low blows no got it <laughs> no she's uh she's a friend that i've i've known for a little while and uh we really hit it off like really hit it off she's from canada and we've actually had a lot of discussions about the problems with the uber socialist uh government in canada and we joke a lot about canada so that was fun um but yeah she yeah. came down here and uh we spent a week together had a really great time. Went down to the, you know, went down to uh, Pensacola and hung out with Merrick for a couple of days. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, our friend Merrick Merrick's Van Lanningham. Isn't he? For, yeah, Merrick oh, Van Lanningham. Oh God! Lanningham. Hell yes, hell yes. And speaking of, and I, I like speaking the guy of, now that she's back <laughs> in Canada, now that she's back in Canada, I plan to make it, you know, a trip at least twice a month. You know, take my daughter or just you know by myself down there to visit him and hang out and, you know. Oh yeah, it's only what like a two-hour drive for you. Uh, well, it's about three hours from where I'm at, but yeah, it's like it's not nearly far enough to justify me not doing it. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not yeah. like I'm driving all the way to fucking Virginia. I mean, yeah. and he's got a gun range on his property, so I it's know. like you could just I say, know. "Hey, I I'm going it. down I, I didn't the gun get to range. shoot on it, but I totally saw it. I yeah. saw it. And he's got metal targets too, uh, so he can actually plink things. I'm I'm pretty sure if if I live three hours or under away from Merrick, I would not be able to avoid going there on a fairly regular basis oh, myself. I know, it, it, I know it, but it's not only that, five since, hours for me, but. I've been down there but, once. But here's the cool part. Here's the cool part. So he manages condos down there, right? He he cleans condos. That's what he does for a living. And he has access to private beaches there. So lo and behold, where did me and Chelsea go when we were down there to go to the beach? At one of these fucking condo complexes. Wow. It was awesome. Yeah. And we didn't have to like fight to get space on a fucking public beach. We had a private beach. It was great. Not only yeah. that, but the Gulf yeah. was was phenomenal. It was wonderful. the The water was so nice. Well, but yeah, no, it was a lot of fun. That's that's what I was doing uh, all of the week that we didn't have the show that Thursday, and then um, she left that following Thursday. When which I I I could be wrong, but I thought I told you guys I wasn't going to be on that week as well. If I didn't, I sincerely apologize. It's, because I, in my mind, I thought I had mentioned it, but if I didn't, I'm my bad. It's, I'm it's fine. Just make like ten taxationist theft memes and say ten. Ten Hail Marys. Yeah, is, no, is no, no, like the Hail Mary of no, the Liberty no. Movement. T ten Hail Murrays. Hail say, Murray. Oh, okay. that, yeah, that yeah, I can do. That ten, I can totally ten, do. Ten Hail Murrays I, I and uh, you know, make you'll, some you'll memes right. and and, <laughs> and put them out there. You have to spread them out there. I am so uh, yeah. I will spread uh, my memes all over, whoa. all over the you, internet. You, you have to because once they're <laughs> out there, they're in the ethos, you know. <laughs> and I've been spending a shit ton of time on Steemit, which recently and it dropped a little bit last week to about a dollar thirty per one Steam token, and now it's back up to like one seventy. So there's a lot of support at around a dollar seventy. Um, but yeah, I've been spending a lot of time on there doing fiction and stuff, and I've gotten involved with some of the communities there again and. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, that's trying to get another writing competition going and trying to write some more fictional stuff and, of course, some more liberty-oriented material. Um, I wrote something out for the uh, the Fourth of July about secession and how uh, if you if you celebrate the Fourth of July but you oppose secession, you're you're shooting yourself in the face. So, <laughs> as your always, foot is in your mouth while, the message whilst out. doing so. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Very cool. Can't man. even kill yourself properly because well, we, you're. We, we your missed you. We missed you big time. Uh, well, I missed you, you guys, and I'm off. glad to. I am. Uh, I am glad to be back. I I needed that little bit of time to get myself oriented and get myself right again, and I'm back, baby. I'm <laughs> back. I can write. I can write checks that my body can cash. Oh, well, that's good. Well, good. 
See, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm at a, I'm at a, I'm at a point in my life where you know I, I didn't take as long of a vacation as you. I took it mostly, you know, almost entirely with my kids. So I had a day of you know feeling all right, and now I'm already back to those. No, I can't cash any of those checks anymore. So <laughs> that's a shame. <laughs> yeah. Well, man, it'll it catches up with you. You know, <laughs> you'll see. Well, that's all right. You can always just call the call the bank and uh, tell them to to stop payment on your account. Yes. Be fine. Yeah. Be fine. Be yeah. fine. No problem. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, no, man, it's good. It's good to have you back and uh, glad you got that rest in because well, we all, we all need it from time to time. And uh, what, uh, what has been going on with you guys? Cause I've been like incognito on Facebook and pretty much everywhere for like the last week and a half. And I've been trying to pull away from Facebook more and more as I'm devoting more time to putting out like original content in terms of writing. So What's uh, what all's been going on? What have I missed? Did I miss anything good? <laughs> Did any firefighters light fires and rape people? Uh, <laughs> I'm sure. Well, statistically speaking, of... I'm pretty sure at least a couple of them did. But awesome, yeah. I love statistics. But go on. I guess. Well, I I, I, I try actually not to. St- I, I mean, I'm not I'm not as invested in trying to stay off it as both of you have become. Um, but uh, I mostly just it's hang hard. out. I just hang out and I you know I I, I post some stuff and uh i i lurk a lot of places and that's about it i don't really engage much but uh, i guess the i guess the one thing that just came up because uh the uh high holy day of uh july 4th just passed and yes the there AMAs. was yes and uh you know of course that that was actually i you know i had been staying off of facebook a lot since i came back from michigan uh, but i met you know of course i got on that day because well you know one of the bigger days of the year i figured i'd make some memes and throw some stuff out there shit posting engage so yeah i wish yeah. i had a sound bar i'd be slamming the my flag my flag my flag <laughs> Uh, but the the one big story, I guess, of course, is was the uh, video that went viral of a fellow anarchist, uh, Emily Lance, urinating on a Chinese bought a Ch- Chinese made American flag. <laughs> And Shit, yeah, yeah, and of course, well, she, and not only was she doing it, but she did it standing by using one of those shiwis or uh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that yeah. was. Uh, that was a lot of fun, <laughs> uh, you know. The, the, I mean, the video itself, whatever. I just, I, 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 I saw it because I was like, to sterilize the flag, right? Well, no, as as came up in a couple of conversations and some threads that I was on for for some reason, um, urine actually isn't sterile. It, as Andre, as Andre said, once it may be, it may be at one point. Once it leaves the body, no, there you go. <laughs> yep, no, it's done for. And yeah. and as you so pointed out, or somebody else pointed out and linked to it. Urine is technically not sterile before it leaves your body because your body has bacteria in it. So, exactly, it is a hundred percent not sterile. Yes, but so and I am not ever going to use it to is it necessary. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, so anyway, so yeah, so she she dodgeball. Y'all remember that movie? Oh yes, it's not necessary. Course. I drink my urine either, <laughs> but, I, it yeah, but exactly. it's sterile and I like the taste. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so she, so she, she, she posted this video and the uh you know once once it went viral the obvious outrage ensued and the oh! you know the the death to death threats rolled in and the doxing started almost immediately and yeah i was actually really surprised i mean well i can't even say i'm all that surprised now but i didn't really expect the doxing to happen quite so quickly but man oh man they just they hammered away at that. Yeah, they they were on hard. it hard, and and then and then uh, the the next level it took was there was reportedly a hit put out her on a Craigslist in Philadelphia, which I think they had mistakenly uh, reported that she was originally, but you know somebody actually made a post <laughs> offering, I believe, three thousand dollars. Yes, to put a hit out and on this is this is this, woman. this is not the first time that somebody doing something controversial has been mistaken for being in Philadelphia. In fact, if I recall correctly, one of the co-hosts of the show was mistakenly believed <laughs> it wasn't, to have been in Philadelphia. It, no, it wasn't Philadelphia. It was Pennsylvania, though. There's, there's, oh, there's yeah, another. That's, I'm sorry. There's, I'm a, sorry. there's a town by the same name of the one I live uh, that I live in in Pennsylvania that I was mistaken. But yeah, the same thing. Uh, but yeah, that that's why that's why for me this. You like, think they were hunting some asshole in Pennsylvania? Uh, <laughs> for when it when it happened to me, they were yes, but. Uh, that's why, of course, the story was was extra interesting to me 
because of what I went through a few months ago, which obviously I still can't talk too much about. We still haven't done an episode on that. Still waiting for my court case to happen. Right, right. <laughs> but uh, this, this 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 coming up did bring, give an opportunity bring up an opportunity for me to uh, I guess talk a little bit more at least at least about the uh, the backlash because that's obviously the thing I, I'm most focused on because I I caught a lot I caught some flack and I had a lot of people unfriend me and apparently block me without even saying anything to me just because I posted you know yesterday that I was uh, in support of her because you know just just because not not because of the action per se because i don't really care one way or the other i mean i i you know for shock and awe yeah it's an interesting take considering normally it's just people burning the flags or shooting the flags but you know you don't see too her many property on her property let's just your but, opinion shouldn't even matter but you know? it's yeah but i'm but i'm talking about like because th- there's uh, there's an obvious expected backlash when you do something like this like in my situation well, of course in my situation if it goes viral and get and gets taken out of taken completely out of context right away and starts being used in a certain a certain way right away then yes you know there is an expected outcome but but not so much cuz i didn't intentionally go out like this was done intentionally to provoke you know yeah. like obviously there's re- like i i can't speak for her i don't actually know the woman uh i i remember seeing her on fa- on, on this in social media a couple of years ago in a couple of different groups i was in we interacted a little bit but she was never on my friends list until yesterday <laughs> and after this all went down and she so i, I really can't speak to her motives necessarily but it's kind of hard to assume anything other than this was completely done just to and to elicit a reaction, you know, both a so, both a positive one from her people who agree with her, and you know, vitriol from the people who don't. Uh, so, Jeremy, f- from what I from what what I'm understanding from what you're telling me is, you weren't friends with her until she posted a video of her peeing, and then you decided yeah, to become friends. Y- with you her. caught me, you know. Is that yeah? yeah. Is that, this is that sounds accurate? like the water Jeremy's sports things, man. Yeah, man, just totally. <laughs> You caught me. Man. Speaking, of, me. speaking of a, taking things out of context, he has exactly. a lurker of known water sports activities. So. <laughs> uh, so you know, well, you know, maybe now know that you've informed me about the the unsterile the unsterileness of urine. You know, Andre, maybe I may have to reconsider. So you know, if any, if nothing I, else, I would, lose your you may have saved me. That you do. <laughs> you may have saved me from my my further uh, depths. Uh, you know, it, no, nobody wants into, gonorrhea and degeneracy. I, I, it's, Nobody wants gonorrhea in the eye. It's, <laughs> it's not pleasant. Take it from me. Take my and word. And we it. have our show it's title. Want. <laughs> no one wants gonorrhea in the <laughs> Nobody eye. Nobody wants gonorrhea in the yes. eye. Yes. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, oh, yes. so anyway, so, so yeah. So, yes, I, I did become friends with her, although I just instinctively sent her a friend request because I, you know, I was like, I can. I, I may not necessarily agree with the tactic because, you know, I, it's not something I would do. I mean, I did do a flag burning video a couple of years ago, but uh, it, e- even that I probably wouldn't do another one of those today, you know, so it's not like so the tactic, you know, whatever. But I but I also like Dave said, I I don't have an opinion necessarily because it's her stuff, her property, her, you know, her pro- stuff, whatever. But as far as the expected uh, backlash, you know, it, there should have I would I would think be a much more expected uh, level of backlash <laughs> that you know she she should have seen coming but again it's yeah. it's yeah. it's still you know even you know even in my situation once it's, once it start once it started snowballing like you know I could see the backlash coming but you still I was still shocked by the how far it got ratcheted up for me where you know people were actually coming to my house and actually you know making active threats that were causing people that hate my guts to call and warn other people that they were legitimately afraid afraid for my life even though they hated me you know like (laughs) when you know when it got to that level it was like it still like blew my mind so i can imagine for her you know you expect the backlash you expect people getting mad but it's the it's the it's the the vicious and vileness that comes out of people and the horrible things they talk about doing like it's not just like beating the crap out of you know like that even that i can i can understand to a certain extent like i'm gonna kick your ass okay i get it here's huffington post in in california in canada they're they're covering it 
And, and she's saying exactly what you're saying. Which People is? People are wishing illness, harm, and suffering upon me over a piece of fabric. Yeah. <laughs> And, and people and, are willing to I, murder well, someone over a flag. This is so sad that people don't realize how brainwashed they are. I'm well, gross it, for peeing on a symbol. Look at yourselves. You people epitomize all that is foul. Yeah, well, that I was that was a great line. I, I love I love that line. I, I saw that post for, from her yesterday. Yeah. And yeah, yeah it, freedom but, I mean, of speech well, to be fair, means like, what, that well, I'm to, entitled okay. to do and say as I please, even well, if you don't like it. I yeah, I don't I don't necessarily yeah that that one I wasn't because once once you involve freedom of speech, I usually tune out because I'm like that's a government thing. I really don't care, you know. Like that's I, that has nothing to do with me because I know yeah. freedom of you don't have Free absolute freedom of speech on your property. Exactly. So I, I try not that argument. I try not to get into at all because it's I don't I'm not going to make that argument. It's not you know it's not something that I I deal with. I try to deal with. But on the whole, it's yeah. That's the hardest thing I've been trying to tell guys is like free markets exist on your property. <laughs> well, to a certain free, extent, when you right now put something free in front of it, it's might as well be it, yeah. a, a fairy tale. Well, yes, exactly. It's, so yeah, the the only the only meaningful way that something is free is within the bounds of property. Like that, that's the only way that it works, and you don't have freedom like unlimited freedom on someone else's property. I mean, to, to a large extent, you don't even necessarily have unlimited freedom on your own property. Like for example, you can't just sit there and, you know, have sex on your front lawn while people are walking by that. Well, I guess, I mean, yeah. Well, okay. Yes. Technically you could, in a, it, I, well, in, I mean, well, in, in a quote, way allows it. Fact, I was, I was going to say it in a quote unquote free if society, you probably could community or whatever, or, you know, currently you well, can, yeah, but that's yeah, a legal the neighborhood issue. agrees to a certain amount of rules. Everyone is, you know, in accordant. Well, you're allowed. Well, yeah, you're so allowed you to bang on the front heat, lawn twice a month. Colony. Yeah, you man, sign me up, baby. Colony out there. There's, there's nudist colonies out there. Between the are, only between the hours of two p.m. and six p.m. Though. No, it has to be even more random than that. But to, <laughs> only on every Nud second nudist Sunday. The, nudist oh. is a little too far for me, I think. But he, hedonist colony, I could definitely. Uh, you know what? I may not live there permanently, but I definitely may spend. I may, I may, I may summer there. You, you would, <laughs> you'd move, there, you'd move there for a summer. <laughs> New <laughs> you, Orleans you, is you, just, you know, you can just drive down there. That's where that's where your summer home would be. Exactly. Your so, <laughs> <laughs> so I I think I I think I could deal with that. So, but yeah, but I mean, get, getting back to the to to what we were talking about with the with this in, with this incident, um, it's it's like you know again, there's a, there's an expected level of backlash, and then there's just the viciousness that people come out with, and also extremely similar to my my situation was right away not going out just after her for what she did, like not even just holding the person responsible who the responsible who you believe is responsible for injuring you and offending you so greatly in some way, but going after her family members. You know, like they put her job, her dad's job in jeopardy, jeopardy almost immediately, you know, like, and it's like, like to the point where like, I saw a couple of posts from her saying she had to, she was making, com she was commenting about what, you know, the conversation she had to have with her, with her father about this. Cause he's a very patriotic guy who does happen to respect the flag, but you know, they doxed her, they doxed their family and they went after her family's jobs and stuff. You know, just like with me, they, they doxed me, they doxed family members and people showed up at my sister's mother-in-law's house, you know, and like, it's just, it's the level of insanity. And I, I don't know, I, I've been having a, a bunch of conversations about this the, the past couple of days now. And while I see that a lot of people are like, well, you know, what, pur what purpose does the action serve, you know? Okay, even you know, even if it was just pure shock and awe, although everything I've seen from her since you know until she uh, disappeared for a little while was the uh, was 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 very logical and and very a uh, very rational and very reasoned responses and explanations of of the of what's of of what's what she's dealing with right now, and it's not, you know not not. Com not crying or complaining like so many people want to claim other than mentioning the fact that it's really messed up that people are going after her family <laughs> and and wishing like not just bodily harm but in the most you know cruel and vicious and vile ways like very descriptive you know like you were mentioning earlier Dave whatever whatever that line was you know so like it's just that level of vitriol like to me 
I can understand why people would would not approve of it. Even people in our communities and post thing only through anonymous accounts. Yeah, I totally. <laughs> well, yeah, I totally get it. But but looking, um, you know, like this CNN meme guy, they tracked the fifteen year old kid down supposedly. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was the wrong kid Me, though. They, yeah, they didn't even get the right guy. So <laughs> that's how that's how. That's how they realize that this is the culture war and that they've got to scare people into not doing this. But memes are, they've already lost. Memes are the culture right now. Well, I, I mean, they, basically, they, if you want to get a message across, you make a meme right now. And I, I hope it goes viral. Yeah, but, you know, it, it's one thing to have something go viral. It's another thing when it goes viral and then you have this happen. You know, like that, like that's what I'm talking about because this is like I've dealt with this now. Uh, you know, uh, and the uh, I think we talked about them, I think we might have talked about it a little bit. This last still week. is nothing compared to what you know <laughs> other people have paid in other countries and other places for. Just oh, yeah, yeah, saying this is nothing, yes, I mean, but but yes, if but you it's, speak out against but, Islam in okay. the wrong country, they will literally just cut your throat on the well, street. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, but no see, judge, no jury. Well, no, no. Yeah. But see, that's, that's what, it, yeah, that's what I'm saying though. Uh, I was, that's the point I was just going to make in those situations. It's almost always the government doing it here. Yeah. It's the mob mentality it's of crab. the peasants. <laughs> yeah. It's the, the crabs, yeah, it's crabs. It's isn't crabs, that, man. isn't, 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 isn't that a little worse? I mean, the gut because the government's oppress everywhere, so that's almost a given. But the fact that these situations well, it, that you're talking it, yeah. about, it's it's usually it when when those things happen, you know, in other countries, yes, they there is swift and violent punishment, but it almost it usually comes from the state. Here we're talking about you know, the, um, you know, the quote unquote us jo yeah, eating Joe our own, up the road, yeah. yeah, us eating our own. Which I I, I mean, well, obviously, I mean, it's it's a bigger deal to me because we have to deal with it because we have to deal with it because we're here, but. Well, I, I, actually, I want to I want to chime in here because I think there, there's something that, I, that I've just kind of formed Epiphany. in my mind an idea is with regards to this. Um, the violence, yeah, that's that's way beyond the pale. Like the the very descriptive and horrible things that are being described that need to be done to her are absolutely deplorable, and they and they should rightly be ridiculed and defended against. But in a private society. Isn't backlash how unpopular things are taken out of the marketplace? Like, isn't that isn't public opinion or well, so-called public opinion the way that ideas and products and services and personalities, like celebrities or whatever, aren't? Isn't that how the free market deals with things? Now, the, now before and before anybody wants to say oh well are you saying that it's a good thing that happened again the violence is not not acceptable in a private society you don't go just fucking kill people because you don't agree with them but that mechanism i think would absolutely exist absent the state oh, i sure. mean it would certainly be it, it would certainly not be nearly as vitriolic and and virulent and violent as it is but isn't i mean isn't that exactly what we're seeing in a way like it's just it's because of Mar like market distortions from the state and normalizing violence via the state that's why we're having like this huge maximum overdrive into violence like without that wouldn't we still see the same thing if she was doing something that was supremely unpopular to a large number of people sure i just like i said in my situation the i didn't have a problem with people choosing to not use my business because they were offended in some way by what I did or, you know, why, why, right, why, what right. I wrote or, 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 my, or, or even my follow up reaction preach. to it. I, 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 I kept saying that, you know, the entire time that I, you know, I refused to back down and I refused to take my deactivate my account. Like, uh, like Emily, unfortunately, uh, had to do yesterday and or earlier today. And, uh, the other guy we were talking about last week, I think a little bit, uh, Danny Blodgett, who went through something earlier this year with the same thing, getting doxxed and having threats and people like, you know, stalking him and stuff. It's, uh, you know, they, they both kind of went into, went into hiding a little bit. I refused and I stood out there and I kept, I kept dealing with it. But, and I said the entire time, if you're going to choose not to, you know, if you, if you want to choose not to use my business, I'm fine with that be, for that exact reason, 
because ostracization, you know, that type of, you know, boycotting those type of mechanisms. Yes. That's what I've been preaching for years now of how, how you would settle, how you would, how the you know market would decide things in a free society. If you had like a community, you know, whatever, an area of people that were all living under the same kind of type of, you know, rules or whatever. Um, that's pretty much how it would work. So yeah, that aspect is not a problem. It's the horrible, horrible, horrible violence and uh, just despicable, you know, just right. nastiness well, that comes out. Well, the reason the reason I bring it up is specifically to the the conversation you and Dave were having about uh, places where the state does and places like here where we do it to ourselves. I, I mean, granted, the violence I think is a result of market distortion. By the government normalizing violence to begin with because that's what government is yeah it's what the state is it's violence but wouldn't that mean that because we're doing it to ourselves we're actually like as a population implementing those same sort of what would be free market controls absent the state it's just the violence that comes along with it because the state has normalized violence in the minds of all these people that that's what that's what I was getting at. That's the question I wanted to ask. Like, wouldn't that mean? Wouldn't that indicate that these this process is in fact happening? It's just distorted because the state distorts these things. Well, yeah, I, I guess because you know there's there's one faction that I guess utilizes these tactics a lot that is do is is just doing it completely absent the state where it's just like in this situation where just an outpouring of people just trying to ruin somebody's life because of something they said or did or posted or whatever. Um, but there's a, there's another, there's a, the other faction of, of the people that are, that are, that do that a lot are the ones who do run to government to have the problem solved. They're the ones who do the same thing, but they do it directly through government. They demand something be changed. They demand something be outlawed. They demand, you know, they demand somebody be punished. So th those are the ones that I guess we have, uh, you know, more work has to be done on because at least the other, the other, the oh, other, yeah, yeah, the yeah, other, yeah. The, I guess I, I, uh, the way I would look at it is that the other faction may at least understand a little bit more that this is a basics or the basics are good. The, the foundation's good. You just, uh, you know, you well, got to yeah, work a little harder. They're there. using the right method. It's just, they're taking it to a, a really, really extreme degree that it, it's not supposed to be taken to. Well, yeah, but yeah, but I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think that could be really modified or at all in the current paradigm. I don't think just because, oh, yeah, because, no, no, because I, of the no, fallback I, I position. Don't, I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that at all. That, that, I, that was, uh, yeah, don't, no, that wasn't part of my problem. Oh, no, yeah. No. I, I, it's just, I, sorry, go ahead. It's because you guys, because you guys mentioned it, I find it interesting that we do, in fact, have that mechanism functioning here where we live. Even though the intervention of the state or you know government agents into the marketplace for dealing with these things and dealing with you know unpopular opinions and people that we don't like, that's warped it and made it really not feasible because it just automatically defaults to violence half the time. But it, the mechanism is still there and it's still being used, which I think is a really neat thing. Because like you said, other places, the state just swoops in and kills you. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, it, it is it is kind of terrifying that you know your your own neighbors, friends, and people that you know or people that you don't know would do it to you. But at the same time, like in a weird sort of twisted kind of way, <laughs> it, it is an example. It is an exemplar of of the same process that we talk about. It's just it's distorted because the state normalizes violence. Well, so. yeah, and they claim a monopoly on everything as well. Just about sure. Oh yeah. But I, 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 I well, think if, not, if they don't, if they're, if they're not attempting to claim a monopoly on something at the moment, it's because they either don't know about it or they haven't figured out it's how to tax it correctly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, more, or, 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 you know, an, enough for them at least. Yeah. Well, I, I think, yeah, but that's, a, that's what I was going to say though, is that I, I think that's why, you know, why we stay suck, stuck in this cycle of it. It's because of the state, because, all of those people, even the ones who aren't running to the, aren't running to their representative right away, or trying to call the police to have somebody like Emily or myself arrested for this action that you know obviously is not a crime in any way. They, uh, in the back of their minds, even those people 
know that as a fallback, they do have the state to run to. So that is what empower yeah. that is yeah. what it, that is what continues to empower them. So you know yeah, exactly you take that exactly. away and you see how many people are now all of a sudden willing to continue to uh boy try to try to cause a ruckus like that you know when there's when there's no when there's no fallback option then you find out how how quickly how many how many people really aren't into that they just they only want to get, get away with it when they know they have some serious backup well it's uh, yeah it's like the the question that we always ask like would you be willing to steal from your neighbor would you be willing to throw your neighbor in a cage and beat the shit out of them if they disagree with you or try and resist you throwing them in a cage like would you personally be willing to take on that responsibility yeah no you're absolutely right you're absolutely right and that's again the state distorts every just, market just by existing by virtue of its existence think it, about it if you were markets. forced to pay for netflix <laughs> yeah that's well, netflix simple. better think have fucking porn forced- on it that's just all i'm gonna say <laughs> hot damn oh god yeah I mean, I, I like my Netflix and that's, all, but I'm pretty sure if I was forced to pay for it. That's the insanity. That's how I look at it. I shouldn't be forced to pay for anything. If I want something, I should have to go to a private market it. to find it. I'll buy it. Well, that's of simple. course. We, don't we, don't we, worry. I'm sure. I'm sure you, who is pearl clutching about, uh, you know, how children will be educated. I I am certain that you have a lot of friends with a lot of different people. Between all of you, surely a way can be found. You, you can't can't honestly sit there and tell me that there's there's no way well no way well i mean that's i I think i was yeah i was gonna i was gonna say i I think thank you dave i I think something like if you're gonna look at specific cases like that i i think education is one of those that is coming closer and closer to going through a huge shift and the state shoots themselves in the foot every step they can to even cling on to this bs that they have right now like pop homeschooling private schools and unschooling are all on the rise well all, not, yeah exactly all seeing multiple multiple year increases they multiply each year how they're increasing okay guys well i know that, state that was my, schools thanks, are Dave. collapsing that was my point Dave, thanks people <laughs> leave people leave and then they can't pay the property taxes so the state schools just collapse yeah, so it happened yeah. exactly in the town I'm living in. Well, that doesn't. They have no more <laughs> high school here. They have no they, more middle they, school that, here. That, that 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 might be that might be Bama. That doesn't happen everywhere. I th- I don't think I don't think that they don't have, they haven't had to close a single school up here on Long Island. The only one they almost closed, they just turned they handed over to the government, and they just you know it's like really handed it over to the government, like actual government people, like <laughs> people that were working there, like they actually took it over. <laughs> they took the school over itself. And uh, they did a horrible yeah. job. That was that was Roosevelt, uh, which is one of the worst, you know, one of the worst towns here on Long Island. Is the one that uh, actually I think the most famous people have come from because I think like Howard Stern, Eddie Murphy, and Flavor Flav all grew up there. Um, I think other people too, but anyway, um, <laughs> like, but for the, that happens in some places, but not all of them. They're not collapsing like that bad. But I just the the point that you made about they're, all they're the numbers bad. and in all the states that aren't. Uh, Yes, but the, um, the, the places, the, the point positive tax paying right now. Well, sure. But the, the point I was making was what you actually, which, which you actually touched on was the fact that all of those other things, homeschooling, unschooling, and private schooling are all on the rise. It's because, and like I said, education is coming to that point. There's a huge paradigm shift coming. More and more people are realizing that not only are the quote unquote public schools failing their children, more and more people are realizing it's really not that difficult to either educate my my child myself or through some co-op or whatever, or do the unschooling thing because more people are finding out, oh my God, they're like all the information is really there. And there's all these programs that are around that you can get that are, are free, <laughs> you know? The like, internet, man, the like, internet. It's It's been a huge, huge change. Exactly. So that's going to, you know, that's, that, that, that's coming. I mean, I, I listen to, you know, one of my favorite podcasts to listen to is the school sucks podcast. And, you know, Brett, Brett's been, Brett Van has been tracking this stuff for a long time and he used to work in the system and, you know, and I've heard plenty of other people say it too. And whenever he has other, you know, other, prof- you know, other education professionals and p- people that he talks to and stuff, they all say the same thing. It's like, yeah, you can see it coming. Like they're, they're going away. And, uh, despite government's best efforts, 
the market is finally going to be allowed to speak in this particular area. You know, if it, if we could get it to happen in even more areas, it'd be even better. But like, you know, it's a good start because this is one of the most important ones as far as as far as I'm concerned. Because government- well, until they send the national guard in and arrest all the homeschoolers. Yeah, yeah, this is it's going to happen. Well, it's going to happen. I sure hope not. Maybe. Well, it, it depends. It, Might as well just point, line up outside your door right there was now. A, my, my kids, my kids aren't ready. My, my kids aren't shooting just yet. I need, minority. <laughs> I need them to get a little older so they can handle a gun too, and we'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> I think if there's a large enough minority for them to go, okay, why are we paying property tax for this? There's only this many kids in the school. Isn't it time these parents just pay for their kids to be privately schooled if they want it? Like, why aren't we? Like, think about the poor people, Dave. Think about the uh, poor people and the minorities. Why do you hate poor I keep people getting and minorities? Calls. Dave? I Why literally do you hate keep space getting calls travel? from <laughs> <laughs> that escalated quickly. I keep keep getting calls from different police uh, fundraisers oh, yeah. from oh, Alabama, yeah. and I, and every time I'm called, they call. They're like, "Would you like to donate some money for our state troopers or whatever?" I'm like, "Are you kidding?" Like, I almost want to be like, "Is no. this a troll? Like, is this a joke? Like, are you? Who is this? Like." <laughs> Who is this? I don't know you. Prank I call her. <laughs> prank call her. <laughs> no, man. I, I go. No, ma'am. No, thank you. Do you, have, do, <laughs> you ever, do you ever take it's, Do you ever take the time time to explain to them why? I've tried. I have. You know what? I, I have actually tried, and I they I, hang know. up the phone pretty quickly. They're not interested in the conversation. <laughs> no, what I mean, am I going to say? I, uh, you know. Well, no. See, it's a it's a pen. See, you, you, you got to know how to work it. Really not working. You got to know. State. You got to know how I mean, to work pro- it. You, you you can if you've done this enough. If you've done this enough, you you learn that if you can get, you can keep them on the line for long. If you always dangle the possibility that you're still interested in donating the money, you can dangle them for a while. <laughs> uh, I, I don't get. A, thankfully, I don't get a lot of like. Maybe I get like one call a year from the. From from the the unions around the whatever the organizations that that or, that organize and do that around here, it's not that it's not as bad as what you guys are talking about. I get it from plenty of other places, but not from them, thankfully. Um, but when I do get it from them, and and just like my my favorite one to do is with the political when you know during uh, election season when all the, oh yeah election season I, I oh, love to, yes. I love to drive those motherfuckers. Well, I've gotten those those motherfuckers five seven almost ten minutes, kept them on the phone and kept going with my you know my dissertation on my, my short dissertation. They on. always call me in the middle of me working. So like I'm, a, I'm thinking about doing what my buddy does when he has a, uh, an unknown phone number, call his phone. He just answers it, you know, blah, 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 you know, his name, uh, like for instance, he go, hello, this is Dave's uh professional phone answering service. We charge a thousand dollars a second. How may I help you? <laughs> and they'll hang up immediately. They'll hang up immediately. Yeah, I I tend to get more creative with it. I'll do voices impersonations, or I'll just like screech really loudly into the phone. Because we because we get oh, that. At, I, I mean, got we get one that guy. At work. That we get, said uh, he was going to kill me once. Ah. I said, "Sir, I can't. I can't hear you. Could you speak up?" I said that to him about four or five times until he was almost screaming. <laughs> and then I was like, "Sir, I don't know why you're ha- why you're getting an attitude and yelling at me." And he's like, <laughs> "Sir, you said he couldn't hear." And I was like, uh, you need to lower your volume. And when I said that, he was like, how about I come kill you, you son of a bitch? <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> That's fantastic. I, was like, uh, I, used to, I used to work at I used to work at a, a telemarketing thing. Like, you know, they would leave messages on your phone and, you know, press one to to be transferred to a representative to learn more about yada yada, whatever. Well, yeah. you press that one button and it sends you to a call center, like one of the ones that I worked at. And I can't tell you how many people were like beyond livid like i'm talking about like screaming into the phone like why the hell did you call me why the fuck did you call me like sir i didn't call you you called me <laughs> no i fucking didn't sir you called me i'm incapable of making outgoing calls from this terminal you 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 called me so i'd like to know why you called me <laughs> I didn't call you. I don't know. take me off the damn list click got him and <laughs> another one wow it was pretty sweet. What it, what, it was, what, it was I, good times. See, I only did, ever did telemarketing once. Once, <laughs> it was, it was, and it, but it was like it was cold calling. Like I actually had to make calls. So that, oh that, yeah, so and, you actually uh, did have to call. People. So I actually did get screamed at by people for calling them. I think the what the, the worst one was there was one time like 
and this was back in the day when I was a huge sports ball fan. And, uh, but I was so drained from working and I had been asked to work on a weekend and, uh, I totally forgot that it was playoff season for the NFL and the jets were in the playoffs that year. Um, which, you know, is kind of rare. <laughs> and, yeah. and, uh, it was one of like the Saturday games or something. And I called, uh, and I, you know, I, ca- I called during the game not even realizing it because I was just so tired from working like so many hours that we can do it. I think I was working two jobs at the time too. And uh, I just got screamed at the entire t- from the t- from like, because th- my shift started two hours before the game started. But the last four hour, four to five hours of the shift were absolutely horrible because I, I you know, I had to keep making phone calls <laughs> and every third call I made, I was getting somebody who was in the middle of watching the game and inexplicably answered the phone anyway. Um, which, you know, I guess, you know, partially their fault, but <laughs> that's right. You I still felt horrible phone call. You picked up that phone call. The, exactly. Call. There was consent, but I still felt like, I still felt like such a douche. Cause I was just like, cause then I was like, I, I felt so horrible and I, I wanted to know the score, but I was like, how do I go about asking this person now? <laughs> cause the, you know, this was before, this was before, uh, you know, internet on your cell phone and stuff. Right. Right. You know. <laughs> Way, way back in the day, but uh, I remember when I remember, I remember quitting that. time existed before that. I, re- I, re- Shut up. I, re- I remember quitting that job shortly after that event. Like I'd been there like six months and like shortly after that, like within a couple of weeks after that, I'm like, I just, I can't, this is just, that was just yeah, a horrible I, experience. I, I couldn't do, I couldn't do cold calling. They, they had an offer for people to do that. I was like, nah, I, I can't do that. Cause I, I got such a kick out of my job because I, I literally didn't have to do anything. I just sat around and waited for the calls to come. And then when they got pissed off, I was like, you called me. And it was, oh my God, it was phenomenal. The the level of anger, just unbridled rage that filled people when you said that. Well, because they don't believe you. It was something satisfying. I, well, I know, I, and I, I totally understand why, but like, oh God, it was so satisfying. Did you, did you explain the mechanism of why that was happening to them? Oh yeah. No. Oh, oh no, you I, did? I did. They didn't want to hear it. They didn't want to hear it. And they just like yelled at me to take their number off the off the list and then hung up. Which was did you tell even more funny do- because I couldn't I couldn't take their number off the list. I was going to say, no did you tell them that too? I'm sorry, I can't do that. Sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. I no, don't have that capability I, I tried either. To. I tried to as they were hanging up the phone, but like they didn't want to listen. So here you go. Yeah. Well, sorry, sucks. Can't help you. That, that, but yeah, that was evil. That, that was probably that was probably one of the the most oh, like despicable jobs I ever had. Yeah, but yeah. it was fun. It was fun. Mm. I you know I'm yeah. a chosen man. I, I can see I'm, I'm nowhere near a good man, so <laughs> I, I could see having fun with that one. But yeah, like I said, I, I did I just did the cold calling once and I'm like, I never want to do this in any form ever again. No thank you. <laughs> Not my thing. So the most despicable job I've ever had was the United States Army. Yeah, well that that's pretty bad, man. <laughs> money for the making making money for the for the oil companies, bro. Well, I mean, because, you know, July 4th comes around, and every time July 4th comes around, I, I have the same thought, you know, about what what it means to, to you know, quote-unquote, serve your country. And, you know, it's always the same thing. And I always end up thinking back, like, from before I joined the Army, like, I, I mean, to be fair, I wasn't a good guy beforehand. I was kind of douchey a little bit i mean i, I was, I, was no. a decent guy. I wasn't terrible but oh yeah i know right impossible you're no. still kind of douchey just keep I, i'm going. super douchey. my point i'm super douchey it's army brainwashing man but uh no like I, I i wasn't ever like a good man but at the same time i was still a man like i was still i still felt you know 100 percent human and the more I introspect and the more I think about that time and the more, you know, the more often it comes up and I actually have to sit down and, and, and do some, some soul searching about it. The more I realize like they, they really take your humanity away and it's in like the most basic and just terrifying way. And like, I, and I had that thought the other day, which I was going to make a, make a post about it. Um, and then I decided to go out and get a kiddie pool for Kate. So I guess I'm, I'm, on the road to recovery but uh no it it's you go from being a person just a regular old person walking down the street any 
faults you may have, whatever, they're your own. But you go from that to like literally you're a tool. And that's what the first nine weeks, that's what basic training is designed to do, is to instill in you that you are perfectly interchangeable with the guy next to you. You have nothing else that no, that anybody in your platoon doesn't also have. doesn't matter who you are, what your name is, where you come from, what your skin color is. It's, it, it, it's irrelevant. You are a perfectly interchangeable good, which is to say you are no longer human because humans are individuals. So you, you are no longer an individual and that it, they strip that away from you. And, you know, yeah, it, it's, it's sort of a mental game and it's a head game they play with you and it's designed, it, it serves a purpose, right? To develop unit cohesion because you have to, to assume that your life is not worth any more than the guy next to you or the, you know, the other guys in your platoon, because that's how, you know, military units work. Well, but it's you terrifying. can't have one Especially, guy running the other way when everyone's supposed to be running one way. Yeah, you know? like your your life cannot be worth more than anyone else's around you. It cannot because otherwise, you know, cohesion will break down. Like your individualism cannot properly function. And once you get to once you get to like an actual line unit, things change a little bit because you know obviously that that doesn't function the same way that you know Lenin had to concede that you had to use money and you had to have some sort of market aspects in order for communism to not just collapse under the weight of its fallacy, you know, but it's still like when you get, when you're in there and you're getting it drilled into your head, if you're not careful, you can end up losing part of yourself. And I did for a long time. And it's, it's weird to think about because I lost my individuality as a human being. And then I was trained repeatedly and expertly on how to use various implements of warfare to kill other human beings and to not see and, them as human beings yeah exactly and because that's the first now, thing you do to your army <laughs> oh yeah well you have to dehumanize the enemy that's the only that's the only way that you exactly. can you can avoid having to deal with the the moral question they had of to stop them what from eating, did i uh, just christmas dinners do. during world war 1 <laughs> yeah yeah the germans they did. and the the English, yeah. but even even now, even now that I've been out for you know two years now, there is still a giant hole in me because I haven't been able to kill other people, and that's a weird thing to say. And I really sincerely oh. hope our listeners don't take that the wrong way because <laughs> I'm not a a murdering psychopath. I'm not. That that's not something I I want to have. That's not something that I enjoy having. That's not something that I enjoy dealing with as part of my psyche because I'm a human being. I'm a fucking individual, damn it. But it's still there. And I it m may go away eventually, but the whole time I was in, it became crystal clear that my unit was never going to deploy. And that depressed the absolute shit out of me. Which is which when you when you step back and look at it from a relatively objective point of view, you should not be depressed. You should not be upset and you should not be saddened by the fact that you're not going to go to some foreign land that you've never visited before solely to kill other people. And there well, I was. Well, yeah, like, because you're, I, well, you were I brainwashed went through cycles of depression. Were, well, you were brainwashed into believing that you were part of this warrior class and then you were told that there was going to be this battle that you needed to be trained for and the battle never came. So yeah, think but, about it. You were a, a you think about you were a screwdriver that's been, that got left on the shelf. It never got to get used to make a house or, or it, screw in a yeah, screw. Exactly. I, I was my humanity was stripped away. I was told that my worth as a as a human being was in being a soldier, and the purpose of a soldier is to go out and kill whoever the enemy is. So for four years I would never got to fulfill what I had adopted as my purpose or what was, you know, forced into me to be my purpose for living. And it's fucking terrifying to think about that. I just I, I wanted to get I've wanted to get that off my chest for the last couple of days. Wow. And you know, being that it's, you know, this the July fourth weekend's come and gone, I figured this this week would probably be a pretty good time to bring it up, but and that's that's kind of the reason why I wanted to get uh, Daniel on because yeah, that's one hell of an I mean, he's, that's one hell of an exclusive. 
<laughs> yeah, thank no, you for, uh, thank you for sharing that's that that's us, heavy. Man, that's heavier shit than we we normally. Well, deal I mean, with, imagine I guess, the but, guys uh, that have been in active combat, like heavy active combat, four or five duties or whatever, and they come back and try to live this, you know, whatever you want to call it, of normal life. It, it's incomprehensible to compare yeah. the two. A war zone to a stable, you know, society. And that's and, and that's why you know post traumatic stress disorder is such a huge virulent problem with combat veterans, is because eventually you your brain deprograms itself. Eventually you start to see yourself as a human being, and once that once that that switch happens, once you go back to you know at least some measure of viewing yourself as human again, and you're not just part of the war machine you then have to deal with the moral implications of literally everything that has happened. And you, it, for most people, you, you really can't process it all that well. For most people, you go through depression. You have fits of psychotic rage. Uh, you get suicidal. You get uh, you know, ultra-violent. You get aggressive. Um, and you get stuck into this, this loop where your, your brain is constantly trying to switch back to what you, know, you established as your baseline because that was your baseline for so long and through so many extremely stressful situations that your brain has reprogrammed itself to want to think that way. But you're still human. You can't turn that off. There, it doesn't matter how much brainwashing happens. Eventually, when you're no longer shooting people, when you're no longer in combat, when you're no longer in fear for your life or the lives of the, the guys to your left clear. and right, yeah, once that fog starts to dissipate, you are faced with the the fact that you you are in fact human. You're not a machine. You're this 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 is not what well, a human think about being is a fight. supposed to do. Think about what happens during a fight, and then when you're out of a fight, you're like, "Whoa, what just happened?" You know, like you're trying to process the situation. Yeah, exactly. That's, exactly. You're you're in when you join a, a military and you go and you're deployed. You're it, just in the midst of a bunch of people fighting. <laughs> so that sentimentality or whatever that has to transfer that has to transfer you know just even maybe even spiritually or or just energy energy wise just it affects everyone war does but yeah so i i i felt that this week was probably a good uh good way to do some introspection and share it with everybody and give you know somebody else at least some sort of perspective on you know how where my thinking goes with it and how my experience has been because you know the the liberty movement draws a lot of veterans in because you know we have already hammered it into our brains that we're supposed to be fighting for liberty and freedom and when liberty you know quote unquote liberty and freedom don't mean the things that we were told that they were supposed to mean and we see them we we have like a a, a visceral reaction to it which is why i think a lot of you know vets turn more Skin towards in the game. conservative uh uh public policy or libertarianism or anarchism right yeah and i think they part of that is that game. part of that is that yeah exactly exactly but part of that is, is this you you find yourself eventually deprogramming yourself and you take a step back and you're like my god this is horrible but it still lingers it, it doesn't really go away it's 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 still there in the back of your mind because it's been your your brain has been twisted to such an extent that it's like it, it takes so much longer to undo all that damage, to unlearn all of these things that have been put into your brain. Yeah, I, I can imagine. So, but seriously, man, I, I appreciate you uh, sharing that with us. So that's uh, it is heavy stuff, yeah, but it's uh, it's you know I think I think it's important. It's definitely an important message to get out there for uh, you know for other people, you, you, just for yourself, obviously. Like you said, you've been struggling with uh, you know for the past couple of days or whatever. But just to uh, for you know not for yourself and other people too. It's a it's a good message. So it's, yeah, and and I hope that anybody listening there who's dealing with the same thing, like you're. It's it's not just you, I promise. Like, don't think that you're, you know, fucking evil because you have these thoughts. Because they, I, I promise you, you're not the only one. You are not the only one. Well, on that note, that should... took a dark turn from gonorrhea. I feel the same way when I, I feel <laughs> the same way when I don't make a meme, Andre. That's that, that that empty hole inside of you that you just can't, you know, <laughs> you can't eat enough, you can't have Must sex enough, you can't steal commies. enough. 
Oh, well, there, there I've was, been like uh, that my was, whole life, the... guys. I've, I've literally hated I don't know what happened. Like a light switch happened as soon as I understood what it was. I was like, I hate commies. And uh, I don't know why. Well, I felt that so way stupid. ever since uh, realizing what it was that my, my parents had to live through and what I was, was born under, which, uh, you know, I, I don't know if I ever told you guys the story, but the first time I started talking was when they executed Ceausescu on the TV. All right. Yes. So that was. That was that was the milestone that marked, you know, my my mental development into talking. That was good. <laughs> so yeah. His death sent a shockwave out that unlocked the brain powers. It's like, oh, okay. So communism is evil. I guess I should start talking now. <laughs> All right. Hey, whatever works. That's right. That's right. Well. All right. Well. But on that note. Yes. So we'll we'll get wrapping up. But again, Andre, that that was great, man. So I'm I'm glad I'm glad you were able to get that off your chest. And uh, thanks for sharing it here. Well, I'm I'm glad to share it with you guys. This is, it's you guys are family. Like this is family. Seeds of Liberty is family. It's it's the and fam, right? And fam, baby. So I mean, it's the I don't feel more comfortable sharing it with anyone else than you guys. All right. Well. Well, I appreciate awesome. that, man. Awesome. And you guys won't look at me like I'm like a fucking crazy psychopath that just wants to murder human beings. So oh. I, I feel safe. I'm, I'm glad you I added that. Safe. I'm glad if you only, added that second part. If people could see what was inside my head. I was just going to say, yeah, I, I, not any more than I normally do, but, you know. <laughs> right. Any more than normal. Exactly. That's right. So, <laughs> all right. Well, we'll get wrapping up. Uh, as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, the new website is up. Thanks to Paul Gordon. It's not the new, what it, it, the new don't I mean is what? SOLpodcast.org. So uh, mm-hmm. if you had that saved anywhere, and bookmarked. SeedsOfLibertyPodcast.com is one of them. I have a backup domain. You can type in either yeah. one of those. It goes to the same page. All right. Well, I'll put both of those in the show. Well, no, just, I just want the but .org one. That's just easier. Uh, so that'll be in the show notes. Uh, Patreon, obviously, is still there, too. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your continued donations. And I promise, I said I'd have both of them out before I went on vacation. I got one of them out after I went on vacation. Uh, there will be another one coming out very shortly, and uh, possibly a second one, possibly possibly another two coming out soon. So, uh, thank you, uh, thanks, guys, for the conversation. It was great. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Peace, peace in the peace. Middle East will never happen. Seeds of liberty, 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 seeds of Hi, this is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live. Michael W. Dean's book, User's Manual for the Human Experience, changed my life. In a culture that attempts to turn you into a compliant victim, this book gives you implementable steps on everything from how to be aware of your environment, walking down the street, to business, to how to handle a toxic person in your life. If you're a human, you need to read this book at least once. Go to Amazon and get the Kindle version, or paperback, or an audiobook of A User's Manual for the Human Experience. The Central Scrutinizer is a Soviet-style leviathan trying to keep track of all you do. That's why I use a VPN or virtual private network from Bola VPN. Bola VPN is inexpensive, secure, and will allow you to use your computer without leaving a trail. Bola VPN is now also offering torrent seed boxes for safely sharing media with the world. And if you open a support ticket saying you heard about them from the Freedom Fiends, they'll add three extra days free. That's Bola VPN at B-O-L-E-H-V-P-N dot net.